everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to give us his top pitchers for opening day, DFS. What's going on, Jim? I would be good, Greg, but it's opening day, which means there are kind of too many options at pitcher for DFS, and like... I shouldn't complain because I know that next Monday when we're on like the fifth starters, that won't be the case. So I should not complain, but I'm going to complain anyway. There are just too many good options here. So I'm, I'm conflicted here. That's, that's where I'm at right now. I thought you were going to say you were a little nervous here, a little tingle with opening day. The jitters are there. You don't want to get it wrong. And the way that you guarantee that is by putting Shane Bieber in your lineup. You never say never when it comes to Bieber. We are believers here on the Hurry Up. And, of course, the Indians are in Detroit to face the Tigers. The Indians are heavy favorites here. And Bieber, well, one of the favorites for the AL Cy Young Award. An obvious play here on day one in MLB DFS. Yeah, he is the highest salary guy on FanDuel for this slate. But it's for good reason. Because, like you said, there's kind of no questions around Shane Bieber. Last year was a tremendous season, a 40% strikeout rate. And we did see Bieber changing things up down the stretch, where he did lower his uh, the usage of his cutter and his slider. Sometimes that can be a concern, because those are good pitches for him. But even when he did that, strikeout rate was still 39%. That is a tremendous number, second on the slate in each pitcher's most relevant sample, I'm going to take that for sure. I expect this Tigers offense to be decent this year. They're not a terrible team by any means, not as bad as perception may be of them, but they're going to strike out. A 26% strikeout rate for their active roster against righties last year. That all bodes very well, and it's in a park that's going to be very cold. That is good for pitching. You want your pitchers pitching in cold parks because the ball doesn't fly as well. We get that here for this game, which will projected to be in the 30s for tomorrow. So Shane Bieber in a good park, very good pitcher, facing a high strikeout offense. It's kind of one where you don't want to overthink it. I don't think he's my top pitcher once you consider salary for this slate, but he's definitely one of the top three, and he's still worth that salary, even on a slate where I do want to try to find some high salary stacks. Shane Bieber, one of the best pitchers in baseball in one of the best matchups that you can ask for with a high strikeout team in a climate that seriously cannot get any better. You're not going to be lonely by taking Shane Bieber here tomorrow in DFS. Up next, you talk a lot about climate, right? Well, the Miami Marlins uh, play in a controlled climate, and even if they didn't, it'd be much warmer than it is in Detroit. They're taking on their cross-state rivals, the Tampa Bay Rays, and the opening day starter for them is Tyler Glasnow. Glasnow is over $10,000 10, on uh, FanDuel here for DFS, and you're buying it. You know, the Marlins, well, they shouldn't be that bad either. Why do you like Glasnow here in this matchup? Yeah, not an elite matchup and not an elite park, as you alluded to, at least this time of year. Not an elite park for pitching, but everything else lines up really, really well for Tyler Glasnow. If we get the 2020 version of Tyler Glasnow, we're going to be pretty excited because in his most relevant sample last year, a 39% strikeout rate when he started to use his off-speed stuff more often, often, he was really good. We could see another level for Glass now this year because he was adding a slider during spring training. And he's been, that's kind of been the one knock on Glass now is that he was a two pitch pitcher, but now he may be adding a slider. And that sliders look pretty good during spring training. 27 strikeouts across just over 14 innings for Tyler Glass now during the spring. And that's one number I do look at during the spring is strikeouts. And Glass now had a lot of them. So he may be adding another pitch. And that could give him three potentially lethal pitches for a guy who was already good, even when he just had two. So the park, not great. I think this offense is fine as well. But Glass now facing a pitcher, which is beneficial. We didn't have that at all last year, but he'll be facing a pitcher uh, for tomorrow's slate. That's definitely enticing, too. He was already good and maybe even better this year. So if I had just one lineup, Greg... I'm putting Tyler Glass now in as my pitcher. He gives me more flexibility to spend up for the Padres and the Dodgers from a stacking perspective. I can feel pretty good about that for this slate. So if I have just one lineup, give me Tyler Glass now and the potential for him to be even better in 2021. If you just have one pitcher to choose, it's Tyler Glass now, according to Jim Sonis, as he has all of the makings of certainly an ace tomorrow against the Miami Marlins. So much that he does. That strikeout rate, fantastic during the spring. And obviously, a strikeout pitcher. He's had a lot of success against the Marlins. A good spot, even with a high price tag. Not as high as Bieber, but even with a high price tag in general, Glass now is someone you can consider. But if you want to get even cheaper than that, a guy I really like tomorrow is Jack Flaherty. The Cardinals ace gets the opening day start against the Cincinnati Reds. 
they are favored over the FanDuel Sportsbook, but in other locations, the Reds are actually favored, which is kind of weird, depending on what sportsbook you're looking at. Take advantage there, potentially, but Jack Flaherty uh, in position against Luis Castillo. It's a good game in the NL Central. Why do you like Flash? I imagine it's the strikeout rate of the Reds. It's also just because Jack Flaherty is super undersalaried. I think that that's kind of the big thing here. $8,600 for a guy with his strikeout ability, you don't get that very often. You're getting it here because it's opening day and they have to, you know, they can't have everyone be $10,000. So you do get some guys pushed down and Flaherty wound up being that guy here. And I'm going to take advantage when that's presented to me. You mentioned the red strikeout rate, 25% for their active roster last year against righties. That's pretty high. Flaherty had a weird start. Remember he got, he had that one start early on and then the Cardinals had like their super long layoff due to COVID and Flaherty never really hit his stride. He did kind of pick things up over his final five starts, 33% strikeout rate in that time. Now Flaherty did walk a lot of guys and this Reds lineup can draw some walks too. That's why I prefer Glasnow if I had just one lineup for Thursday slate. I would go Glasnow over Flaherty because there are some walk concerns there. Could drive with his pitch count and get Flaherty bounced in this game a little bit earlier. That is one concern for sure, but he has upside. And if I can get upside for 10 strikeouts at $8,600, that's not a chance we're going to get all that often this year. So I think that Flaherty is a tremendous option facing a high strikeout offense and a guy who could very well be the highest scoring pitcher on the slate if things break in his favor. Now, I will say, if you want to load up on the Dodgers, load up on the Padres, get to Fernando Tatis, you can do so by using John Means. He's $6,700, a lot of strikeouts over his final four starts last year. Red Sox lineup, not what he used to be. I don't hate it, but I also understand if you want to push back on that one because it's John Means. But Flaherty, pretty easy to swallow, $8,600, a lot of strikeout upside. So if you don't want to go all the way down to Means, which, again, I am okay with, I do think that Flaherty is a really good option as well just because his salary is too low. Oh, I totally agree with you. You, you look at this salary, $8,600, and you wonder why FanDuel is – having to price him so low. Like you said, everybody can't be $10,000. Jack Flaherty is a better pitcher than this price indicates. It's tough to ignore uh, where it's at right now. Flaherty has the ability to strike hitters out. Obviously, the Reds strike out a ton against right-handers, as you mentioned, putting Flaherty very clearly on the mat in this opening day game. Uh, there are other options, as Jim said, but these three, they seem to make the most sense to me. That's going to do it for us here at the Vandal Hurry Up. Jim, I am excited Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Let's hope there are no cancellations due to weather. Let's just have some fun, watch some baseball, hopefully get through this uh, opening slate of games, and uh, just have a fun year in 2021. A full 162 games are scheduled for 2021, and it all begins tomorrow. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.